Look, quite deep questions like life after death, is there any? Uh, UFOs, people from elsewhere, things from elsewhere, all of these things that we talk about, ghosts. Um, they're all the same questions that were there when, when I was doing the broadcast, and those questions are there and bigger now. I suppose, as, as you can see, I'm older. Uh, as we get older, we wonder more about these things. I certainly do. And so I have a lot of questions. And fortunately, there's a lot of really good people out there who have answers. My, my favorite line from Contact is, want to take a ride? Well, we're going to have a ride here. So I'm going to go on the air and have fun. And somebody calls me up and says, hey, I've found this hole that goes down to the middle of nowhere, or possibly even all the way to Hades. You stop, you begin to explore it, and that's how my show has always worked, and it will continue to work that way. I have no idea what's coming. No idea, and I don't want to know. I just want to find it and explore. Tonight on Coast to Coast AM with Art Bell and his guest, Mel Waters, and the story of Mel's Hole, the bottomless pit in Washington State. I've got Mel on the line. Mel's the guy with the never-ending hole. Some of what I do is flat-out entertainment. I've never hidden that fact. Some of it is hard science, and I leave it up to the audience to decide which is which. Obviously, a lot of the guests that I've had on for years, I will continue to have on, and I'll explore new areas of the weird and the unknown, and I'll depend on my callers. I'll depend a lot on the audience, and that's what I've always done, I'll continue to do. There's something about Pahrump, Nevada, that I love, and the desert that I love, George, and that I guess that never changes because I was on the other side of the world in the Philippines, hot and humid, uh, and now I'm back to hot and dry. For coast to coast, you didn't avoid politics, but you didn't dwell on it. Actually, so. uh, when I was on KDWN in Los Angeles, it was a political show, and I got to the point where I was fed up, I couldn't take it anymore. I, one day I just finally said, that's it, I'm done, enough politics. I'm going to begin talking about something that interests me. And I think that began with, um, I don't know, Bob Lazar and um, UFOs, and the phones lit up, the world changed, my boss turned color, and I kept going, and it resulted in what it did, and now here I am again. But people throughout the world believe that unidentified flying objects are spacecraft guided by intelligent beings from beyond the Earth. And if you are among the believers, you have probably spent at least a few late nights listening to the program broadcast from this desert compound. Coast to Coast with Art Bell is the place to talk about UFOs or ufology as many of his listeners call it. Uh, west of the Rockies, you're on the air. Hi. Hey, Art. This is Matt in Colorado. Hey, Matt. Hey, um, got a sighting for you. It happened last summer. Oh? It was huge. It's cigar-shaped. The, cigar the so common it's cause right. of ufology is to finally determine what in the hell is flying in our skies. It hurt your eyes, so I turned away. When I looked back, it has gone. I think that uh, Coast to Coast AM is the main conduit for ufology information. And um, over my phone lines have come the most informed ufologists, the best scientists, and some of the craziest people you'll ever meet. And I uh, was moving very slowly with the cloud cover. It, def and I, and it I definitely never, overflew New York City. Uh, and I never heard about a triangular uh, UFO until I looked it up and I found that you had seen one. Yep. Three points of light. The weird thing about them... Coast to Coast became the fourth most popular program on American radio. It was really weird. Like they were doing a dance? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And huh. they went over the rooftop. I think we're fascinated with the whole concept of alien intelligence because it would be so strange if we were all alone. Imagine for a moment how it would feel if we were all alone, if there was no other life, other intelligent life, anywhere in all that you see out there. Dude, 
is now heard on 437 stations in the United States and Canada. He's on the Internet worldwide. He has approximately 12 million listeners. He's on all night long. 10 p.m. to 3 a.m. are his broadcast hours. Many times you hear him late at night, in the early hours of the morning, late evening. He's on. Where did all this start? Where did you come from suddenly? I came from the world of rock and roll. I was in radio for, Larry, about 20 years. A jock. A jock. That's right. And then I finally got out up and down the dial. You know, I got fed up with the whole gypsy existence, and, and I left radio. And I went and I worked in microwave for about six years, and I built a cable company. And then I got bored. Have you ever uh, tried to stay away from, from this? Yeah, well, it's impossible, isn't it? It's impossible. So, so how, why come back in as an all-night host? Or is that the way you came back in? There was a radio station, a 50,000-watt station in Las Vegas, and... One day they came to me as I worked in cable and they said, Gee, wouldn't you like to do a little talk radio again? How about doing, you know, a little weekend work? And that was the beginning of the end. I was sucked back in. Pretty soon, there I am doing a daytime show asking, You know, this 50,000 watt station covers about 13 states at night. I'd love to have a shot at that. And they gave me a shot. And I did that for 10 years. And then we began syndication. And here I am today. So I was sucked back into radio. Why all night? You did an all night show too. I, I started this. Uh, you <laughs> began that way, right? Yeah. Um, I love all night, and I would never leave it. And I think there's something special about the nighttime and nighttime people. How did you get into, for want of a better term, the bag you got into of things? Occultish. Evolution. Different. Evolution. A slow evolution. I didn't do it quickly. I would. These are things that fascinate me. Absolutely fascinate me. So I would slowly inject them as I was doing radio programs. And I found the audience reacted well. I enjoyed doing it. Uh, the ratings reflected the fact that it was working. And so it was a slow evolution. Do you think it works more at night than, say, if you were doing the same thing? At I don't think it would work at all during the day. Because not a chance. Because nighttime people are different. When nighttime comes, the buzz of the day slows down. The phones aren't ringing. You're not going crazy in the office. You have time to sit down and think about esoteric things. And the attention spans greater. Much order. greater. Did you become a believer or a reporter? I'm still a reporter. I, I you know, I, I, I don't think you could call me a believer. And uh, everybody's always asking for proof. Do you believe in aliens? Well, I believe they, they could be here. Are they here? No, I can't say that. But a lot of your callers describe it, right? Uh, oh, of course. Of course. Of course. Of course. I've interviewed abductees. I've interviewed uh, doctors who have taken implants out of people's hands and other parts of their body. So, sure. Sure. Now, if you question it, do you believe that they believe it? And how do you separate that I from believe the charlatan? I believe that some of them believe it. How do I separate it? I don't. I don't. In other words, I assume that my audience is made up of adult people. And so I present them with hard science. I present them with uh, soft stories. And I allow them to make the decision. This all of the dark, then, from your standpoint, has been self-educated to you, right? In other words, 20 years ago, you wouldn't have said, I have this wild interest in UFOs. Not a chance. You're into things different, right? Would you say, is that the correct way? No, I, I, I don't think so. I think that what I'm into is part of life. I think it's as much of the things that you can't touch, the things that you're not sure of. They're as much a part of our life as the air that we're breathing right now. It's just that a lot of people don't notice. They don't take the time. You don't screen the calls, right? I don't screen I calls. didn't either for all those. I've never screened a call till television. Is that right? Yeah, but it's far, much more fun. Why it screen is. A call? My view is that if the talk show host is talented enough, that you can take any call, no matter how strange, how weird, and make it fun, entertaining, informational, something or another. It's and just I, I, I enjoy not. I don't want to know what's coming. Certainly, much neither. Well, much more spontaneous. Right? Absolutely. Well, the, the 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 screen is screens, but I don't want to know what the subject is. All I want to know, <laughs> all I ever want to know, is the city. That's mm -hmm. the only thing that that mattered. But you, in other words, what, when I hear your show, it's a happening, right? It's happening. Then nobody has filtered anything. That's right. right? Uh, a lot of times, I will obviously prepare. I spend about as much time preparing and knowing the news that I end up not talking about, and whatever it is that I've got prepared to talk about, about half the time or better. 
Do you never, never subject, subject or can anybody call on anything? Anybody can call on anything. And, and I, uh, believe me, that's what I get. I get time travelers. I get people claiming to be immortal. I get people... I get some pretty strange people. We'll but they're, they're fun. Wait, there's well. one other elegant explanation for the possibility of God. I talked to you about the God part of the brain. That's one idea. Another idea is that there was, you know, our nation's best theoretical physicists, like Dr. Katu, who I frequently interview, believe in the Big Bang. In other words, there was That's something... The there was, there was something. Sure, you bet. Something smaller than a quark, which we can't even measure right now and find, suddenly became all that is. Well, that doesn't work for me. I, I just, I, in, in my imagination, I can't imagine something that small becoming all that now is, and frankly, they can't explain it either. So, imagine, Larry, that there's an entity before there's anything, before there's time or space, there's an entity. This entity is alone. This entity, in effect, blows itself up, blows itself up, and now becomes all that is, including you. So God is within all of us. Elegant. Who made the entity? You know, How it may know? be... Uh, the first alien contact that we think we had was in Roswell. And it was a crash. Now, where did that occur? That occurred near the 509th bomb group. And what did they do? They were the, the group that dropped, what, the first atomic bomb. So if, if they are out there, when the mushroom clouds began forming, I think that that would have... Don't, don't you think yeah. uh, that, yeah, that I would, would say? At that point, they would say, hmm... What are they doing down there? When you do all you do and you talk to all the people you all talk to, do you, I know you said earlier you were a reporter, but do you also become... I'm not a reporter. Or do you become, I'm a talk show host. Do you become conspiratorially oriented? Mm. A lot of talk show hosts live off it. I think he killed I don't, him. Uh, you know, they think, think Vince Foster. A conspiracy is not the first thing that I leap to. Not the first not possibility. The, okay. I, I like jumping to the most logical possibility. And... and I hesitantly go to a, a conspiracy theory. But are there conspiracies? Oh, yes, of course there are. Sure. Why are we so interested in the paranormal? You think? Well, because, because, uh, Larry, when we're done here on Earth, we all want to know that there's something else out there, don't we? And that is the land of the paranormal. And if there are ghosts, then that's proof that there's life after death. death, right? So would you say the most unexplainable thing is death? Of course it is. The thing we know the least about. We have and faith. The thing we, as I said earlier, it's the thing we fear the most, the thing we quietly contemplate the most. Um, of course it's death. Because cosmically, we're here. Harris Teeter hired UFO expert Art Bell to compare their new Your Home brand of aluminum foil to the leading brand. First, the leading brand. Now, the Your Home brand. Well, there you have it. Harris Teeter's new Your Home brand of aluminum foil stops those pesky alien mind control waves as well as the leading brand. And it keeps your food fresh. Harris Teeter's Your Home brand. The difference is in the savings. Let's run down some things. You believe aliens have abducted some people on this planet? I believe it's possible. You yes. believe Whitley Strieber? I do. Whitley's a good friend. Crop circles. Undeniable. Uh, Doug and Dave with the chain and board. Well, uh, yes, that accounts for some of them. Not 10 acre crop circles with 192 rings. Ghosts? Absolutely. People call about ghosts? All the time. They hear them? See them? Yes. Las Vegas, Nevada. Hello. Las Vegas. Hi, Larry. Hi, Art. Hi. Uh, Mr. Bell, I would like to ask you if you feel the world, or the U.S. in particular, is responsible enough to handle the knowledge of extraterrestrials? I think that a lot of people, probably like yourself, are responsible enough to handle the information. But I think that if 10 or 20 percent of the people are not responsible enough to handle it, then unfortunately you may recall that uh, in our own revolution it takes a very small percentage of people to not be capable of handling uh, the situation for it to get out of control. And that is usually the reason given by the believers as to why the government doesn't want to tell you. Well, there was something called the Brookings Report, Larry, which said essentially that religious institutions and all the other great institutional beliefs that we have 
would very likely crumble if we found out that we are not who we thought we were. Wouldn't you guess most people would like to hear that? That there's something else out there? Wouldn't you guess that? Most people believe there is something else out there, but I, I'm not sure that they want to hear that our ancestors were little gray guys. Art Bell and his wife Ramona say they encountered something from out there in 1994. We were on the way home from Las Vegas, about a half mile from where we're standing at the moment. I just happened to look out the rear view, the rear view mirror and just saw something coming up from behind us. And it looked like it, it wasn't normal. Normal. And I, I kept saying, what, what the hell is that? And this thing floated above our heads, doing about 30 miles That's a good an hour. Word, float, yeah. Floated, yeah, it floated, uh, or defied. Had to have been defying gravity, or it was a lighter than air craft. I don't know, but it was triangular. It was monstrous. The moon and the stars went away, and there it was above us. And we stood and watched it go across the valley and head toward the mountains. My God, what did we just see? But we saw it, and when you see something of that sort, your life is never, ever the same. I saw one. That's what really uh -huh. developed it for me. What did you see? Fortunately, I was not by myself. I was with my wife, and this was during the time when I was commuting from my home to Las Vegas, a 65-mile one-way drive, 120 miles every day. You live remote. I live in a... It, well, as a matter of fact, you remember when you did that show, sitting out desk like this in the middle of the desert, Never forget it. Never forget it. Again, it. Area 51. For two hours. I live area just over. You right. live near there. I live just over the mountain from that There's area. Nothing near there. I I have always wondered when you were sitting there, was it getting colder and colder? Whoa, colder. And colder. <laughs> well, so. We started in the afternoon. By the time it got to be night, I was freezing to death, and it was. But there's nothing there. 
I mean, Nothing you, there. you wait for the lights of Vegas, where could you possibly live there? Uh, uh, well, you, I can see the lights of Vegas just barely from where I live. They kind of light up one little segment of the sky. Otherwise, it's clear, beautiful. The stars are a million deep. Milky Way is from one side all the you way to the other You broadcast from there? I do. From your house? From home. All right. What do you see that night? What's happening? All right. I'm on the way back from Las Vegas. and We're probably about a quarter mile from home. To give you the setting, it's almost a full moon. It's quiet. It's so quiet that you can hear crickets at a quarter mile. That quiet. We're on the last leg on the way home, and my wife said, what the hell is that? She was in the passenger seat, and she caught something coming up from behind. I said, I don't know. And I pulled the car over to the side of the road. We both got out, and here coming up from behind us, at about, I would guess, 150 feet, is a triangular object with three lights on it, three solid lights on it. Uh, one, I believe, was strobing in the front. It had to be about 150 feet from one point of the triangle to the next. It was monstrous. And How far off the ground? About 150 feet. It, it, it looked so big and so close that I could have thrown a rock at it. <laughs> no kidding. Scared? Even... No, scared is not the right word. Uh, we watched it come up from behind us, Larry. And it came, it came directly over our heads. At close encounters, the stars and the moon went away. And it made no sound. As it passed over our heads, you could hear the crickets at a quarter mile, Larry. Still, no propulsion, no noise, going, I guess, about 30 miles an hour. I was in the Air Force. I know what aerodynamic flight requires. And trust me, this thing was defying gravity. Of course, the explanation would be that's an experimental Air Force base that's secret to everyone, and that probably is something they're working on. Then, maybe so. But if we have anti-gravitic craft, that's as almost as big a story as <laughs> if they are here. This defied the law of gravity. Absolutely. 30 miles an hour, floating, not flying. And we watched it, we stood and we watched it go, w watched it go over the valley for about five minutes, kind of with our mouths on our, you know, open. Why did that not make you a believer that there is something somewhere else? It did make me a believer that there are things that we don't know about. Now, it could be ours, it could be theirs, but the way I figure it, either way, it's a big, big story. Yeah, if it's ours, it's a big story. If it's theirs, it's If it's big. ours and we have anti-gravity, it's a big story. Mm -hmm. And they're yeah, keeping a lot from us. Uh, they developed the F-117 stealth up there. Well, what have they been doing since? What happened in Paris? Uh, I talked to a lot of people about out-of-body experiences. They're called OBEs. And... I've been to the edge of an OBE before, Larry. Have you ever been in bed, sort of lying there, and you feel a kind of a, a vibration and a buzzing begin? Sometimes you snap out of it, and you feel like you're falling. Almost everybody's mm -hmm. had that experience. Or you can't get up. Or you can't get up. Or you're paralyzed. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the beginning of an OBE, Larry. And I've been there several times, and I'm a control freak. You know, I, I do a radio show, and I do my own board, and I control everything. I control the phones. And I'm a control freak, so I would never let it go. But I went to Paris with my wife. And all of a sudden, I wasn't doing a radio show every day. I didn't have a deadline. I relaxed. I let my guard down. And? And I was lying in bed, awake. And instantly, with acceleration that I can only describe as incredible, but you didn't feel it as though the lips pressing back, you know, going up in the shuttle, I was above Paris in what I can only describe as total ecstasy. There, there are really not words to describe what I felt. And it surprised no body, me. It body. No, absolutely not. It shocked me so much that I snapped right back into my body. Right back into my body. And here's something you don't do. I was so excited, I was so shocked, that I woke my wife up and I said, guess what happened to me? I said, and then I told her the whole story. Don't do that. So don't don't wake up your wife to tell her that kind of wagons, story. Right. <laughs> well, couldn't it have been, though, um, you flew over Paris, you having a dream no. sequence? Because in no. dreams, no, no, dreams no, no, you're no, no, I, anything. I have dreams every other day, every week. I know what dreams are. This was no dream. I was out of my body. Do you remember going back into it? It was instantaneous. And I, the reason I went back so quickly, I believe, there was no warning that it was coming. It was utterly spontaneous because I had my guard down. And I snapped back into my body because 
I was so shocked at what had occurred. I Which mean, leads you to think what? All right, that plus this equals means. Well, it may not mean anything. It may be, it may be that our brains, in other words, it's a function of a living human brain. Does it mean, somebody told me that's as close as you're ever going to be to death. And I don't know if that's true. I don't know that that means there's life after death. So you see, I really am a skeptic. But it may mean that it's a function of a living, my living Some human brain. Some near death report things like that, right? Absolutely. That way they've been, when they don't die and they come Absolutely. back. Absolutely. But uh, short of one, a couple thousand years ago, nobody's come back after three or four days to tell us. Here it is. This is, uh, my audience will understand what this is. What you have in your hand is bismuth and magnesium. And it, it is from bismuth. Roswell. This is ostensibly from the crash at Roswell, New Mexico. This has been examined by just about every rare metals, uh, exotic metals manufacturer in the country. And it's been to Sandy. It's been to all the great labs of the country. Nobody knows how it's made. Nobody knows how it's kept together. It should be pure dust. Nobody knows where it came from. Most likely explanation, it was, um, it was put together in space. Now, what, what you're holding in your hand is impossible. That bismuth and magnesium could be uh, uh, put together is simply impossible. Now, by the way, we had it tested at Carnegie in Washington. And I forget the type of radiation, but it's 60 times normal. So you might want to put it back. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> And what do I do with this? Uh, you take it home and uh, you put it up uh, in the closet somewhere. And someday! Anyway, and let's you go. You are about to have your last child, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was listening to your show last night, Art, and you were talking to Whitley yes. about the uh, material that you showed Larry this evening. That's right. And I have two questions. Sure. One is. Can you tell us where you obtained the material? Yes, it was sent to me. Leave it in the glass and put it back. Absolutely. Okay. It, was, it was sent to me, this was sent to me, by a source in South Carolina, a military source, who claimed that his grandfather retrieved it from Roswell. Roswell and I've, I've, I've got all that paperwork on. the benefit, that's copy. Uh, an unidentified flying object supposed to have landed with bodies, right? Absolutely. Okay. Now, the second question, ma'am? And the second question is, why is the government covering up so much about Roswell? Well, the answer to that might be why they're covering up so much about a lot of things, and that is that the answers, the answers to things like this may lead to explanations that the government is not ready for us to have, and that we may not, in all honesty, be ready ourselves. Or this is a material not on this earth. All indications are that this was not made on Earth, could not have been made on Earth. The best exotic labs in this country have tried to reproduce it, and they have not done so. Hi, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. I had a really fun time making it, and as you can tell, Art Bell is just one of my favorite minds of the last century. I just think he was such a cool person. I love that he followed his dream, his interests, his curiosities, and his passions. I think that the way that he, he was so self-possessed and he created something so powerful for so many thousands of people to enjoy. I admire that so much. I admire him so much as a creator. He was kind of an OG content creator when you really think about it and an OG podcaster too, even though it was technically a radio show, we had these long form communications and conversations with people. And I just really appreciate that. I think it's really cool and I miss him. And Nova, my cat is currently bouncing up against the uh, tripod. So forgive, forgive that. But anyway, I wanted to make something just to highlight how wonderful Art Bell was and how much I admire his work. I thought it was a really cool glimpse into him. There isn't a lot of footage of him online, so I wanted to make something special for fellow Art Bell fans. And I have to say, every time I found an Art Bell video or any kind of post online, even on Reddit, everybody's so supportive and kind and everybody seems to be really interested in the same kinds of things, whether they're a skeptic, whether they're a believer, it's really cool. I myself am more of a skeptic if you're familiar with me at all, but I still have all of these curiosities around the world and, this, and the yet unsolved things that we have. And it's really cool to hear dialogue, respectful especially dialogue, around 
those still lingering mysteries of existence, whether that be human or supernatural or cosmic, what have you. And I just think Art Bell went about things in such a unique and internally driven way. Like you can really tell from the way he communicated that he was truly fascinated and passionate about these things. This was his true heart project. He lived his life in a way where I think most of us would love to, where we're driven internally by some kind of curiosity or interest and we get to just make an entire life out of it and all of our connections and all of the things that we do can kind of thread back to that one deep curiosity and in interviews art has said that his biggest question was what happens after death or is there life after death and that's personally one of my biggest questions too probably my biggest question and since I was very young, that's been my biggest question. I've always wondered about that. And I hope Art knows now. I personally hope there's something after death because I've lost a lot of people that I love and I would love to be reunited with them one day. But I guess we won't know till we're there. Anyway, let me know what your biggest Art Bell, your favorite Art Bell shows are, what your favorite interests. Are you a UFO, crop circle, alien invasion person? Are you into life after death, out of body experiences? or any of the other stuff that they talk about on the show. I love it. I wish we could bring something like that back. I know George Nori is currently in charge of the show now, and it's just not the same to me. No disrespect, but it's just not Art Bell. Nobody's going to be Art Bell. But hopefully one day we get someone that fills that void, because I think he brought a lot of people together. He was a conduit for great conversations, and he was a safe haven for a lot of night owl introvert types that were either on the road or at their home. And I personally listen to Art Bell when I'm going to sleep at night. If I can't sleep, I pop on an Art Bell podcast and just hearing his voice and listening to the kind of topics that they were sharing just it doesn't necessarily put me to sleep. Sometimes I'm so interested I stay up longer, but it relaxes me and makes me feel like I have like-minded people in my life. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and the tribute and hopefully none of this gets copyright stricken. If it does, that means I'm gonna have to take pieces of the video out so if it feels short or if it feels like there isn't a lot of the video, I'm sorry. It just means that I probably got a copyright strike or something similar and I had to make the video shorter. As I started, started the video editing, it was over an hour long, which as those of you who are familiar with me know I'm not very fast at editing. I take a long time to edit. I'm really busy and my YouTube is a side project for me for now. So I try to take as much time as I can to do the videos that I want, but I still don't get that much time doing it. So it's taken me a long time to do this video and get it out. But I appreciate those of you who've known about it, who are still waiting. And I hope those of you who are still part of this channel and following me here, I hope you're all doing well, taking good care of yourselves. And if you didn't know about Art Bell before the video, I hope that maybe I sparked some interest and you can find some cool Art Bell stuff to figure out for yourselves and find a new little interest or path. So anyway, take care of yourselves. I hope you're all doing well. Bye.